Hey everybody, Aaron here from the Cool Guys Nation and welcome to episode 3 of the new Space Marine Codex review. Today we're going to be looking at HQ units. So before I move on to going through each of the HQ choices, because there are a lot and this video can get rather long, and if you want to watch all of them, that's great. Maybe I'll try to put in some sort of notation as to where the different HQ choices are. If you want to jump right to it, that might be good. Let me just say one thing before you go through it all. What we're seeing with the HQs is pretty simple changes for everybody that's almost universal. I say almost, not everybody follows this pattern, but pretty much the HQ units are getting feel no pain. That's what's going on. As well, whatever special rules they have for their particular warlord trait, it's going to be only useful for their detachment, not necessarily everybody on the battlefield, although there are some exceptions to that. So. If that's all you want to know, what is the basic change that's being ha that's happening with HQ units? Nothing. Their stats are the same, their points are the same, their equipment's the same, but most of them have gained feel no pain. That's really the big change. Space Marine HQ are now Necrons. 3 plus, 4 plus, invulnerable, plus feel no pain. All right, to start things off, we're going to be taking a look at the Captain and the Chapter Master. Now, in the new codex, they've made the Chapter Master an upgrade to the Captain, which I like a lot, because now you have one page with the rules for both, everything is done as an upgrade, the base points for the Captain and the Chapter Master are the same, 90 points for the Captain, plus 40 points to upgrade, which of course is 130 points, um, which is the same as it was before. The really big difference is that a chapter master may replace his power armor, bolt pistol, chain sword, frag and crack grenades with terminator armor, storm bolter, and power sword that used to be 40 points, now it's only 30. That's pretty awesome. Orbital strike, also not called orbital bombardment anymore, still chapter master only. All of the stats are the same. So when you take a chapter master in terminator armor, you are saving 10 points. He has been made 10 points cheaper. So the real difference for the Chapter Master and the Captain, one, is that the Chapter Master is now an upgrade to a Captain. A Battle Demi Company consists of one Captain or one Chaplain, and you can upgrade a Kaplan to a Chapter Master. So yeah, your Battle Demi Company can use a Chapter Master because a Captain is a Chapter Master. Right? Do you get that? Because it's an upgrade, they're not separate units. I also like that they're on the same page in terms of layout. All right, so we're going to be looking at the basic chaplain right now, and essentially, they're exactly the same. Bolt pistol, frag crack, uh, arcanium, rosarius, everything is pretty much the same. Um, the captain in terminator armor may replace his storm bolter with a combi flamer, a melta, or a plasma is now six points, and that's really annoying. That is really annoying. It went from five points to six points. I... I don't like stuff like that. Everything should be even or five, 10, 15, 20 points. Why? Why try to set up a 1500 point game and you can't take a stupid plasma gun because it's six points instead of five and you're gonna be at 1501? I don't get it. I just, I don't understand that. Stats are the same basic point cost is the same. All right, so the basic librarian is still 65 points. Its stats, his stats, I guess, I don't know, I guess it could be a girl, um, are pretty much the same. Armor 3 plus, force weapon, crack grenade, crack grenade, frag crack grenade, psychic hood, uh, no no fear, chapter tactics, independent character, psyker, mastery level one. Uh, may generate powers from the same powers, and I haven't actually looked at the psychic powers yet, so there might be differences in the psychic powers, but just in terms from a stats perspective, the, everything is the same. Alright, so now we're going to be taking a look at the Tech Marine, and the Tech Marine is very different than it used to be. For one, there is no more Master of the Forge. I cannot find it anywhere in the new book. It makes sense because it had to do with Dreadnoughts and Vulnerable Dreadnoughts and Ironclad Dreadnoughts, and now we have formations, so Master of the Forge is gone. And in his place, we have a much more badass Tech Marine. The Ballistic skill has gone from 4 to 5, his Wounds has gone from 1 to 2, his Attacks have gone from 1 to 2, he's also 15 points more expensive. The basic tech marine can also take a conversion beamer now, which means you can have a conversion beamer for 85 points, whereas before 
you would have to do it on top of your Master of the Forge. So that would be a 110 point conversion beamer. So that's really cool. Also, when you couple the Tech Marine with the Armored Task Force, the formation that uses the Tech Marine, it's really cool. It's awesome. I really love the new Tech Marines. I've always loved Tech Marines. I thought that they were a little underpowered and kind of useless, but now they make a lot more sense. The Servitors are exactly the same, point costs are the same, pretty much all the point costs are the same, Blessing of the Mosh is the same, Bolster Defense is the same. It's the same except for 15 points more expensive and much better base stats as well as a pretty cool formation to go along with it. Next we are going to be looking at the named characters and there are a lot of named characters so I'm going to be adding time markers at the bottom if there's a particular one that you want to jump to otherwise you can watch the whole video this video is probably going to wind up being about 40 minutes long because there is a lot a lot of named characters for space marines all right first up is kalgar the chapter master of the ultramarines and a lot of things are the same with him but a couple of things are very different so first of all his point cost is the same 275 points his weapon skill and ballistic skill are both the same, 6 and 5. Strength, toughness, wounds are all 4. Initiative is 5. Attacks are 4. Leadership 10. Save 2 plus. So it's pretty much the same guy. His war gear is also pretty much the same. Power sword, frag and crack grenades, iron halo, and orbital strike. Although orbital strike moved from special ability to war gear and it changed from orbital bombardment to orbital strike. Let's just double check, make sure it's the same. Strength 10 AP 1, Ordnance 1, Barrage, Large Blast, one use only. Strength 10 AP 1, Ordnance 1, Barrage, Large Blast, Blast, and then it has the rule Orbital, but it's essentially exactly the same, so not a lot of changes there. What is different is that he no longer has Titanic Might, which allows him to re-roll Armor Penetration, and I don't think that's a big deal. Also, God of War has changed. So God of War allowed you to choose whether or not you wanted to pass or fail a morale check for anybody in the Ultramarines chapter. Now, it is a little bit different. God of War is now, if he is your Warlord, you can choose any Warlord trait from the Space Marine Warlord trait table. Okay, so that's definitely different. And then they've added a new special rule called Master Tactician. And Master Tactician says you may reuse a single extra doc doctrine of any type once per game. When this combat doctrine is enacted, all ultramarine models in your army are affected. So he had that before, but I believe uh, that might have been in a different category. So slightly different profile uh they might have made him a little bit weaker in terms of being able to deal with vehicles but overall very solid hq choice very cool model okay now we're going to be taking a look at captain Caesarius, and he has had a pretty significant change one he went from 185 points down to 10 and two they got rid of the mantle which gave him feel no pain and they just added it as feel no pain also Rights of battle has been changed to rights of war, and this may be a big deal, it may not be a big deal, I think it might be a big deal. Before, rights of battle says, uh, if he's on the battlefield, all friendly units with chapter tactics, ultramarine, special rule, can use his leadership for any morale or pinning test. Now it says, rights of war, all models in your warlord's detachment can use his leadership value in place of their own. So that might dramatically reduce the number of people who can use his rights of war leadership. Now space marines have a relatively high leadership. The leadership difference between their commanders and their veterans and their sergeants and their regular troops is really not that significant. So I'm not sure if that's going to be too big of a deal. Other than that, <clears throat> everything else is the same. All right, now we're going to look at Chief Librarian Tigurius, <clears throat> one of my favorite models. He has always been such a great model. Yeah, he's expensive, but I love this guy. And with his new formation, he's going to be boss. So there's really not a lot of changes to him. There are a few minor changes, 
All of his stats are the same. Weapon skill 5, ballistic skill 4, strength 4, toughness 4, wounds 3, initiative 4, actions 2, leadership 10, save 3+. plus. He's still infantry character, he's still unique, he still costs 165 points, so all of that's the same. He still comes with a bolt pistol, frag grenades, crack grenades. They shall know no fear, chapter tactics, ultramarines, independent character, um, and his hood of hellfire and rod of Tigerius are also the same. What is a little bit different is his warlord trait, um, storm of fire, has now been changed so that it only affects his detachment and instead of re-rolling wounds or to hit let's see uh re-roll failed to hit it now adds rending i think i would rather have the re-roll i definitely think i'd rather have the re-roll rather than rending more hits is better than rending hits i think but at least he still has it other than that they took gift of prescience and master psyker and they turned it into Master of Prescience, which essentially has the exact same rules as both of those special rules, just combined into one. So, he may re-roll any roll of the dice to see which powers he knows, and if your army contains him, you can choose to re-roll any reserve rolls for his detachment. So originally that was two traits, now it's one trait. Pretty much exactly the same, but when you consider the fact that he has his new formation where he can take a whole bunch of other librarians with him and they can combine their psychic energy in order to get uh, spells off on as good as a 2+, plus. he's pretty cool, so I strongly recommend that if you don't have one of these guys, buy one of these guys. Alright, now we're going to look at our Tyranid Hunter, Chaplain Cassius, of course named after the character from the TV show Supernatural, I'm sure. Um, not really a whole lot has changed here. All of his stats are the same. Weapon skill 5, ballistic skill 4, strength 4, toughness 6, wounds 2, initiative 4, attacks 2, leadership 10, save 3+. plus. He's still 130 points. <clears throat> Everything else is the same. His war gear is the same, his special rules are the same, and his warlord trait is the same. Except for one thing. The fear test is now taken on 3d6 for Angel of Death instead of a standard leadership test, which means it's much easier for enemy units to fail their fear test. And that's really good because fear against units with high leadership like other space marines or chaos or necrons, it doesn't work very well. You know, what you roll at 11, uh, a five and a six or a six and a five or two sixes, I mean, that's not a high probability. But now that it's 3d6 instead of 2d6, a lot more units are gonna be running away. So that is fantastic. Also his gun, uh, in Furnace is pretty much the same. It's identical. Uh, he does have his own full page. Instead of sharing a page with Khan, who we're going to be talking about next, other than that, great choice. Good model. Wish it was a little bit cheaper, but still looking pretty good. Kill those Tyranids. Kosaro Khan! So, again, for some reason, they're moving rules around into different categories. They're kind of changing the names and combining things and moving things, there's not a lot different with Khan. 125 points, weapon skill 6, ballistic skill 5, strength 4, toughness 4, wounds 3, initiative 5, attacks 3, leadership 10, save 3, plus all the same, bolt pistol, frag grenade, crack grenade, iron halo, yep, iron halo is the same, and they shall know no fear, chapter tactics, white scars, furious charge, independent character, master of the hunt. Moon fang, exactly the same. Pretty cool weapon. Moon dragon, exactly the same. Same point cost. But Champion of Humanity and Master of the Hunt have been mixed up a little bit and they added something. So let's start with the old Champion of Humanity rule is now part of Master of the Hunt, which also includes the old Master of the Hunt rules except worded differently. So hold on. If he's your warlord, white scarred models that have bike or are embarked on a Rhino or Razorback. It only says Rhino or Razorback. I'm not sure why. I guess that means, I don't know, drop pods don't have Scout, which they wouldn't have it anyways because they're immobile. So, I don't know. It's exactly the same, except now, killing the enemy Warlord immediately scores you D3 extra victory points as part of Master of the Hunt. The new Champion of Humanity says, your warlord and all friendly units within 12 inches of your warlord with a faction that is part of the armies of the Imperium must re-roll failed morale checks, pinning tests, and fear tests. So I guess that's kind of cool because it'll affect more than just white scars. 
At least that's how I'm reading it, which means that if you take him and you take anything that's part of the armies of the Imperium, he can confer his bonus to it. So that's pretty cool. It makes it a lot easier to take him as a supplement to another army so that you can get like that fast scout bike stuff. But other than that, he's exactly the same. I don't know why they didn't just leave the old warlord trait and the old special rules the same and then add something new so we really understood what's going on. Instead, they reuse some of the old names and move the rules around. Anyways, they make it a little bit confusing. He's still a good character. He's very pretty. White Scars rock. I'm sure there's going to be a lot more stuff coming out for White Scars other than just what's in this book. All right, next up we have Vulcan Histan. And they made a little bit of a change to this guy that I think is going to make him pretty scary on the battlefield. So let's start with what's the same. We'll get to what's different at the end. Same points, same skills. Weapon skill 6, BS 5, strength 4, toughness 4, wounds 3, initiative 5, attacks 3, leadership 10, 2 plus, bolt pistol, frag and crack grenades, they shall know no fear, chapter tactics, salamanders, independent character, the forge father, gauntlets of the forge, the mantle, and the spear of Vulcan. All of that stuff is the same. I'm not going to go over it. If you have the new book, read it. If you have the old book, read it. What is difference? Not the forge father. Forge Father is exactly the same. All Melta guns, Kami Meltas, and Multi Meltas fired by his detachment have Mastercrafted. So I guess it's only his detachment now and not the whole army. That's a minor change, but whatever. Pretty much the same. Iron Resolve is now Feel No Pain. Instead of determining assault results, add one to the total if the Warlord is locked in that combat. I'm really happy with that change. I think that's far more important. You have a 3 plus invulnerable because of the mantle, and now you have a 5 plus feel no pain. He's a freaking Necron. That's great. He's going to be very survivable. And when he's survivable, who cares if the enemy runs away? He's going to destroy them with all of his amazing close combat attacks. What I don't get is why not just strike Iron Resolve from the Warlord trait, get rid of it, and put feel no pain under the special rules so that you don't have to click Iron Resolve to read feel no pain. That's just confusing. So the way they laid it out, I don't know, confusing. What they actually did, though, I really like. I think he, I think a feel no pain plus a three plus invulnerable, he's going to be hard to kill. He's going to be very hard to kill, especially in close combat. All right, Shadow Captain Shrike. So identical. Everything's the same, except Angel of Death, leadership for fear test, 3d6 instead of standard leadership. Otherwise, everything's the same. The talents are the same. See but remain unseen is, seen is the same. All of the stats are the same. Point cost is the same. It's the same. It's the same. So if you liked him before, you like him now. If you didn't like him before, maybe you won't like him now. I don't know. But Raven Guard is pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, Raven Guard's awesome. So, uh, yeah, he's the same. That was easy. Captain Lysander. Again, very similar to the old one. There is some slight changes, though. Point cost is the same, weapon skill 6, ballistic skill 5, strength 4, toughness 4, wounds 4, initiative 5, attacks 3, leadership 10, save 2 plus. Yeah, so he, he loses Champion of Humanity and he gains Feel No Pain. Awesome, still great, fantastic. Feel No Pain, way better than D3 extra victory points. The Feel No Pain, is, keep him alive, you'll get a lot more than D3 extra victory points. Good unit, good change. Alright, Pedro Cantor. If you guys haven't picked up on it yet, there is definitely a theme going on. What is different? Iron Resolve. Feel no pain. That's pretty much it. Okay, well the writers of the new Codex must be feeling the way I'm feeling because I'm on my 10th HQ review and this one's the easiest. It's the same. It's identical. It's identical. Except, of course, for the word detachment for his special ability. It only affects his detachment, so I guess technically got a little bit worse. Other than that, he's the same. Let's move on. Oh, High Marshal. We're talking about High Marshal. He's the same. Okay, the Emperor's Champion is different, and it's pretty significantly different, so that's a nice change. Let's start with what isn't different. Still 140 points, he's still a Black Templar, his stats are the same, weapon skill 6, ballistic skill 4, strength 4, toughness 4, wounds 2, initiative 5, attacks 2, leadership 10, strength plus 2. He still has a bolt pistol, crack grenades. Frag Grenades, Chapter Tactics, Black Templars, Fearless, Independent Character. His Armor of Faith is the same, uh, 2 plus, 4 plus, and Vulnerable, I believe. His Black Sword is the same. We're going to come back to the Black Sword because that being the same doesn't make any sense. But, 
Honor or Death has been added, and Slayer of Champions has been changed. So, Honor or Death. Uh, he must accept challenges. If there's more than one friendly model in combat with this rule, you may select with which model issues or accepts the challenge. Okay? Slayer of Champions is now very different. And I think it's different better. But I guess we'll have to play with it and see. So, when fighting in a challenge, the Emperor's Champion re-rolls fail to hit rolls, and any to wound roll of six are resolved with the instant death special rule. So he re-rolls to hit now. What was it before? Before, he had to pick a stance. And if he chose one stance, he got instant death. If he chose another stance, he got plus two strength and unwieldy. So the plus two strength unwieldy, gone. That has been replaced with re-roll failed uh, two hits, I believe. Let's just make sure it's not to hit or to wound. No. Re-roll failed to hit and any to wound. So he can re-roll to hit and to wound. That's awesome. Now, the only thing that's not awesome is that the Black Sword is Mastercrafted, which of course allows you to re-roll one failed to hit. So, what's, what's the point, right? That's useless now. But overall, he's much better, because you're going to be re-rolling your to hits, you're going to be re-rolling your to wounds, he's going to be doing a lot of damage. And he always gets instant death on six, you don't have to choose between the two. So, He's pretty baller. Um, I think he, they should have reduced his point cost and removed Mastercrafted from his weapon, but it's okay. A little bit of redundancy is okay, I guess. So, uh, all right, now we're going to be taking a look at Chaplain Grimaldius, and pretty much he's exactly the same, too. There's only the standard differences. One, rights of war, detachment only, instead of everybody, and the... Servitor's Relics uh, is no longer a 6 plus invulnerable, it's now a 5 plus feel no pain. So again, lots of feel no pain. And that's nice because you can give units within 6 inches <clears throat> of his Servitor's feel no pain. And that's pretty cool, they got attack, attack squad on either side, 3 plus armor, 5 plus feel no pain. I think Necrons are gonna be mad. So, that's pretty cool. Alright everybody, we're getting pretty close to the end of the HQ units. Right now, we are going to look at our Command Squad. Command Squad base stats are the same, base points are a little bit cheaper. It is now a 90-point squad instead of a 100-point squad. On top of that, all their combi weapons are also 5 points cheaper. So you can take those 10 points that you save and you can give them 2 combi weapons instead of 1 combi weapon, which is fantastic. Other than that, everything else is pretty much the same except for the standards. So. The standard of the Emperor used to be friendly units within 12 inches of the bearer and with the same chapter tactics, re-roll failed morale checks and pinning tests. In addition, friendly units chosen from the Space Marine Codex within 6 inches of the bearer of the Emperor have the Hatred Special Rule and add 1 to their total when determining Assault Rules. So, um, that is different. The new Emperor's Ascendant Banner, for one, is 5 points more expensive. It went from 60 to 65 and it has a different rule set. Now, a model equipped with the standard of the Emperor has the Fear Special Rule. In addition, friendly models drawn from the same chapter as the model equipped with the standard of the Emperor have plus one attack and Fearless while they're within 12 inches of the model with the standard. So, plus one attack, uh, cause fear, have fear, and Fearless. Okay, last but not least, we are going to be looking at the Honor Guard, and if I missed any HQ choice from the new Space Marine Codex, then I am very sorry. There are way too many HQ choices for Space Marines. Oh my goodness. That is a lot of HQ choices. But, here we are. We are at the end. We are at the Honor Guard. Again, pretty much everything is the same. Points are 85. Stats are the same. Equipment is the same. Um, yeah, some of the weapons might be a little bit cheaper. Um, I haven't looked at all the weapons, but the only real difference, just like uh, the Command Squad, is the standard is different. Now, the basic standard is the same, but the Emperor standard is different. We already went over those rules. You can also check it for yourself. Other than that, the Honor Guard, it's the Honor Guard. Same old thing, but really fun use it, unit. I don't know if you ever fielded it. I love fielding it, and I'm excited to field it again with the new Codex.
Okay, that brings us to the end of part three of the new Space Marine Codex review. If I missed anything or made, made any mistakes, please let me know in the comments below. There is a lot of information in the new Codex, a lot of things to go back and forth and compare. I hope that I've done a good job. I hope that I've answered a lot of your questions. Again, there are going to be time markers so that you can jump to specific units if you want to. I know this has been a very long video, and if you stuck through the whole thing, thank you very much. If not, well, then you're not seeing this message, so it's okay. Next time, part four of the Space Marine New Codex review, we are going to be looking at the dreadnoughts and a few of the other things that I skipped over in the last video. And then part five will be the formations, and we will be done with the new Space Marine Codex, and I will be happy and ready to move on, because boy, oh boy, there's a lot of information in these books. Until next time, this has been Aaron from the Cool Guys Nation.